least experience. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, I think this is uh, first. Before that, I would just like to uh, get some clarifications on the orders. All orders in nature, except human beings, live with definite conduct. Uh, where you say now the plant order depends on the seed. Because the seed alone cannot, I think, again uh, bring the conduct of the, you know, the, the order of the plant. Because uh, the seed will require moisture, the soil, you know, sunlight. That, uh, uh, with all together, then I think uh, then you have the plants, fruits, flowers, etc. But this is just uh, my own. And the second one is the whether we humans uh, decide for the technology, what technology we want, or the technology decides for us. That's, uh, on that basis, I would like to share one small experience that which I had. It was when I was a Zonga of Thibu. I was invited by one school to come and then uh, participate in, in uh, one of the uh, social uh, activities on the weekends. And that was the uprooting of the marijuana plants. Do you know marijuana plants? Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, there I was asked to talk to the students. And, uh, and then when we were student, young boy in the village. The marijuana plants were used as a broom to sweep the surroundings. And then it was also served as a uh, food for the, for the pigs and uh, bed for the cows. Then later, this marijuana plant is consumed as a drug by our youths. And then when we look deeply inside, the marijuana plant 30 years ago, the same marijuana plant, and after 30 years also, same marijuana plant. Marijuana plant never asked the humans that I will become a you know, broom for you. I will serve you as a pig's food. But it was the human who decided as a friend and as an enemy. So it is us, we, uh, we, are, we are the human that uh, who decides whether that is a good or bad, whether that is a, a something friend or an enemy. So I think uh, here your talk is very much uh, in line with what I It's true. In fact, one will be able to see the most of these things that we have to decide whether to use marijuana for sweeping our, you know, floor or to put ourselves into drug. I, I forgot to, to mention. Then, uh, when I was asked to uh, talk to the students, <laughs> I, know, I forgot that. Uh, so that part. Then, uh, it was so difficult for me to talk to them because they were uprooting the marijuana as if that marijuana plant was an enemy. <laughs> when they themselves were uh, <laughs> In fact, you know, a similar example of this gunpowder was known to Indians and Chinese for thousands of years. But it was not used as a weapon to fire. It was used as a part of you know, this, what is called Latish Bali, to form, you know, to make crackers and just, you know, have this sparklings, you know, in one of the festivals. For thousands of years it was not there. What is required to make that gunpowder into a gun is that feeling, that strong feeling of opposition, where we are willing to kill the other in large numbers. So when the West came across this, right, they immediately started using this as a weapon. So it's technology who is deciding us today, 
But if we are human, we know what is natural for us, then we will be able to decide what we are going to do with the technology. What we are going to do with things around, right? With other human beings, with the rest of nature. True. Yeah. Regarding this question of uh, <coughs> this land order, it is true that you know, anything that we are talking about, either human being or plants or animals, right? It is always in relationship with the whole nature. So it is not really in isolation. So even the seed, the seed will decide the conduct of the plant, but it will not grow in isolation. It needs everything, you know, all favorable conditions are required, the proper soil is required, the humidity is required, the temperature is required, right? All that is required. But the most basic thing in this process is the seed. If you destroy the seed or if you alter the seed, then the conduct of the tree will change. So you have to preserve the seeds in order to ensure the conduct of the tree. So if you modify the seed with the same, you know, soil and water and everything else, you will have a different type of plant. So in that sense, you know, it is said that seed is playing a fundamental role in deciding the conduct of the plant, the tree. Breed is playing a you know, fundamental role in deciding the conduct of the animal. And education and sanskar is playing a very important role in deciding the conduct of the human being. On the last one, on the on the last one about education deciding the conduct of a human being. Um, also, it is uh, important, I think, uh, I was just reading some literature on this one, and there are now researchers done, and then uh, which say that actually in human beings also the seed can determine certain amount. They are saying, um, that the happiness is what we seek. Happiness, about 15% of our happiness depend on the physical facilities that we have. About 25%, this is just from some study, 25% is dependent on actually the seed. That means, uh, you know, some people are naturally happy by when you are born, you know, you, you have that nature. And then about 60%, of course, education. I don't know how you verify that. How would, would, you, uh, would that be true to say that? Yeah, we will look into this. Uh, in fact, if you, when we investigate into human being, it turns out that the human being is in the form of coexistence of self, I, and the body. So all this, what gets transmitted, from one generation to the other generation, right? One is by way of body. So your body okay, is very much like the body of your father or your mother. So that gene gets transmitted from the body of the father and the mother to the body of the son or the daughter. But when it comes to the sanskar, right, that is what the self would, you know, see things as, right? Its perception, its way of doing things, right? That is transmitted not through the body, but through the education. Whether this education is given by the parents, right? Or by the, you know, school, or by the society at large. So these are the three major, you know, kind of work contributors to education. One is the parents, you know, the family. Second is the teachers, you know, schools, colleges. And third is the society at large, or the environment that we are providing to the students. So what gets communicated, you know, transmitted in the family okay, is this sanskar, which is going from self to self. So the thinking of the father, the mother, eh, gets, you know, transmitted to the way of thinking to the, of the child. So it is not through body, 
it is through self. And that is why, if you shift this person, you know, this boy, from that society to some other society, from that you know, set of parents to other set of parents, right, then this will not get transmitted. So if you put them in a new environment, okay, the child will be affected by this new environment. So its sanskar will be formed on the basis of the sanskar of the parents. So the transmission is by way of sanskar, by the way of my understanding and my feeling to my children. And not by way of the body, not by way of the genes. But that we will investigate, you know, in more detail when we talk about the human being. So, <coughs> three factors are there. One is the parents, their way of thinking, their way of doing things, right? Their feeling is transmitted to the children. That's first part of the education and some start. Second is what we get in the schools and the colleges, right? Through the teachers. And third is what we get from the society you know, as an environment at large. Our television channels, right? Our radio channels, our advertisements, right? What we consider as good or bad in the society. All that gets transmitted to us. So education and sanskar in the broad sense would mean all this. And that's how the human being is made, right? That is how your behavior is decided in the society. As far as the role of physical facility is concerned, we are just going to discuss about that. You know. How important is physical facility for us? How important is relationship for us? How important is the understanding for us? That's what we are going to explore in this session. So, what gets transmitted through the body is the genes of the body and therefore the characteristics of the body, not the self. Right? What gets transmitted through sanskar through education in sanskar, is the sanskar of the parents, the sanskar of the teachers and the sanskar of the society at large. So many of these studies, you know, will have to be reviewed because they are done under the assumption that there is no self. So if there is no self, then everything has to be finally, you know, understood in terms of the body itself. So, this is the role of education that we said, back to this first. So, we are saying that if you want to ensure definite human conduct, then what we need is the human education in sanskar. And that is what we said by role of education. Right? When we said the role of education is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with definite human conduct. So if we have education like this, then we will have people, human beings living with definite human conduct. And then only we can get free from this fear of inhuman behavior of human beings. And what we are doing? Are we trying to work on this or we are trying to work on this and this? If you look at your education today, right, is your education talking about ensuring the competence to live with definite human conduct or is trying to modify the physical things around? Basically all of them, but more so the last one. Is it trying to work on that? Because we live in a natural world, so we have to always devise ways of contracting uh, yeah, but that, what is that natural world? That's what I was saying. Is it in opposition? Is it in harmony? <coughs> we are made to assume that it is in opposition. Right? Therefore, we have to fight it out. Right? Similarly, the other human beings are also in opposition. So, we have to fight it out with them. Is that true? So that is the education we are giving, right? We are made to believe that there is a struggle for survival and there is survival of the fittest. 
Therefore, what we need to do is to struggle hard. Right? Struggle to begin with, right? then fight, and then finally war. And this is essential. If we have to develop. And this is what the most developed countries are doing. If we look at the unified uh, goal of the species, human species, and I think uh, uh, that is very important because you have to be the best, you, you have to be better than the rest of uh, the other so that you, know, you gain competitive ages. And by then, uh, by doing so, you will be, you will emerge as the fittest. Which means you, you can you can pass your uh, gene better and they survive. So this order will be propagated. So if that is the the di kind of direction that we are taking, then this uh, this should be better in terms of uh, having all this education in all of this. Yeah, but that's what I'm asking. Are we doing something for this? Are we trying to ensure competence to live with definite human conduct? And this idea of being better than all other species, what would it mean? Would it mean that I am able to live in harmony with everything around? Or would it mean that I am able to fight out and, you know, kind of wipe out all other wings, all other units in nature? But that seems to be the, the entire rhythm of the whole you know, natural uh, world in which uh, we are, uh, of which we are a part. So we'll try to understand that. Is it that the nature is always in opposition? Is it that nature is in harmony? That we will have to understand. That is what is happening. The kind of education we are giving is making us more you know, uncertain in our conduct. Because we have certain beliefs in our education, right? which is creating a right, you know, lot of problems all around. I guess that we have this, uh, four long way to go, about 8 days. So this is the, I think, the foundation. So we need to be very, very carefully understood. So when you say human conduct, I, I'm sorry for the other audience because I'm taking this opportunity. That the human conduct, what do you mean by human conduct? What are, uh, how can you elaborate, I mean, if you can elaborate on human conduct? What are the elements? Yeah. That's what we are going to do all these eight days. We are trying to <laughs> elaborate on this human contact. Yeah, that's, that's essentially the point we are going to make. And as I said, I'm just trying to, you know, in this session, draw your attention towards what is going to be the content and what is going to be the process. So, all these eight days, we are essentially trying to, going to work on what is this human contact. Number one. Number two, what kind of education and sanskar would it require to ensure, you know, living with definite human conduct? In the process, we try to find out what is the human goal, right? What do we already, you know, what do we all want to achieve as a human being? Then how do we achieve that, you know, human goal, right? And in order to achieve that human goal, what is going to be our conduct? That would be called as human conduct, right? In order to ensure this human conduct, what is going to be the education in sanskar? What is going to be that human education in sanskar? So these are the essential four things, you know, we are going to explore all through to decide what is human goal, right? Then trying to work out how we can achieve this human goal, right? Then what is going to be the human conduct to ensure the achievement of this human goal? And finally, what is going to be the education in sanskar, which will ensure this human conduct. So all this will unfold, you know, slowly. <coughs> Till now, what all I have said is very simple. All I have said is that we need to relook at our education. Right? 
because we want we as a human being want to live with definite human conduct and we are not living with definite human conduct right that is one second the major role you know which all these activities that are around which plays on deciding on our conduct is the education and sanskar therefore we need to have the right education and sanskar in order to ensure human conduct that is all that i have conveyed but certainly we need to investigate and explore to each one of them in more detail yeah again the plant order and animal order you know the conduct of the plant and animal can easily easily be changed uh, like you know, people have uh, pets lions and tigers so they are changing the conduct of the animals Uh, biotechnology has brought a lot of uh, development in the agricultural pa- sectors. I am talking about the positive as- aspects of the biotechnology, and we can change the order of the plants. Uh, human conduct is not only the education, but I feel uh, you know, the family, society, peer groups, friends, they play the vital role, more important role than in education. uh i i just would like to play with your uh, definition of uh, what's the role of education i'll put it uh, into the modern text like if i ask any parents why you are sending your uh, children to the school the simple answer would be i want to make my children professional you know if i ask the students sitting here why you are studying in the college they would say simply for the job they want to get a job they want to earn money they want to support themselves they want to support their family they want to support their society so the role of education is to facilitate the development of knowledge and providing information to be the self reliance to support individually family and the society i mean these are what the expectations of the uh, of the parents and the students are why do we go to the school to get the job so i feel uh in the in human conduct in human behavior of the human being the major responsibility goes to the family to the peer group to the friends and the society rather than education because we are sending our students our children to the education institute to get the job even if you look at the expectations of the universities from all the different curriculum and the courses they offer is the employability if you look at the expectations of the teacher from their students is that the student should be grab a good opportunity and get a good job in the in the job market if you have expectations from our own children is again the same thing you know getting a good job otherwise you know there was no need to have different different uh, curriculum and courses like why do we have professional courses why do we have engineering because i want to see my son as an engineer i want to see my son as a doctor So I think the role of education institute is to develop those competency which can take the uh, children to the job uh, and and get the self reliance and the other factors like especially when I come to I mean see the word sanskara uh, sanskar actually starts from the wombs of the mother and then you know the first institution who plays a very vital role in the sanskar is the family institute and the, when when the child from the crawling he steps out of out of his home he comes in contact with the neighbor he comes in contact with the environment friends so i guess they play a very vital role than than in education because uh, the expectations of uh, almost many people in the world including me is i am sending my uh, you know son to the school to get a job not to right you see i mean two parts what you are saying one is quite agreeable that the major party which are involved in education is not just schools and colleges there for the teachers okay i have already mentioned this that two other important parties one is the parents right the family and and the major part of this sanskar of the, you know kind of understanding of the feeling of the child is decided you know by the age of 5 So in that sense, you know, the society, the family is a major 
you know, party which contributes to the education in Sanskar and therefore the conduct of the children. And also the society at large, you know, with all its media and beliefs and you know, approach to life. So all three parties are there, you know, the family, but with the parents in the family, the schools, the colleges, and also the society. So that's quite well taken. Regarding the second part, as to what we are giving in the name of education today and what we have you know, fixed as a goal, as a target of education, it is also true. What you are saying is what we are doing today. But is that you know, sufficient for human being? That is the question we are asking. We are saying, we are trying to make education as a means to earn our bread. Right? That is fine. Earning bread is required. But is it enough for human being? Is it sufficient for human being to earn his bread, to get physical facility, or something more is required? Right? That is essentially the point we are, you know, Raising. Okay. So it was in that sense as to whether this is essential or not essential, I am asking. What we are doing in the name of education today is certainly making them competent to get a good job. Right? Which means good salary, which means good physical facility. Right? But is that sufficient? Or do we need to ensure that he lives with a definite human condition? Because majority of the problem is that we are facing in this society. Okay? The major players in that those problems we are the educated people, not the uneducated people. Right? Now what do we do? I took this example of corruption, right? In India we had two <coughs> recent examples, right? One point seven lakh crores of corruption, right? Now we don't have corruption in crores. Long back we have left it, you know. Not even hundreds of crores, or ten, you know, thousand crores. This is in lakh crores. 1.7 lakh crores of corruption was found in the dealing of this telephone, you know, uh, network, 2G and 3G spectrum. Right. Think of it. 1.7 lakh crores. And who are these people? Educated people, uneducated people? <laughs> Highly educated people, right? Yes. And people with lot of power and lot of money, right? Are doing it. Recently we have another one, 1.86 lakh crore, okay? Of corruption in auctioning of the coal mines, right? Who are these people? All the engineers, you know, the secretaries, the ministers, right? <laughs> All of them put together. <coughs> so, it is true that the kind of education target that you have said today is to get a job. Is that enough? And that was the point of raising, you know, this is increasing or decreasing? If it is increasing, you know, despite all education that we are giving, then we have to raise a question about this. So we'll see, you know, what is the role of physical facility in human being, you know, and what are the other things which are required. That's what we are going to do next. But before that, let me conclude a few things. So, is there a need for such an education which ensures the developing the competence to live with definite human conduct in all human beings. Is it required? Yes. Is it necessary? Yes. Yes. And of course, definite human uh, conduct is considered in a positive way, no? Positive way. It can be definite human conduct in a negative way. But then it will not be definite. So definite is necessarily taken as positive. Because if I start fighting, right, I cannot continue to fight, can I? Nobody can continue to fight. <laughs> you will have to stop for some time. <laughs> 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 so 
So it, the moment you take it in the negative sense, you cannot make it definite. I can be in relationship right, all the time, but I can't be in fighting all the time. It's very difficult for you to sustain, even for a day.